Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and of course I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now we're all on our journey towards Chap Nirvana. It's a pilgrimage and we can help each other by answering questions. And I've had a question from a viewer today called O.P. Taylor and they've asked Dear Ash, I was watching your video from two years ago when you bought your Look 1880 Birkdale long wingtip shoes and you were actually putting the first conditioning and shine on those out of the box. I was wondering if you could do an update on those shoes. I don't know why, but that's one of my favourite videos and I'd like to see how they're holding up. Well, that OP Taylor is a really pertinent question because when I saw your question, I thought, do you know what? I've had those shoes for a few years now. And when I looked it up, I discovered that I've just passed in October of 23, my three year anniversary with these shoes. And I think that's a really great time to answer your question and give you something of an update video on how they're doing, because they have seen extensive service in my collection. Okay, so just a reminder about the brand that we're talking about today, it's Loke. Now Loke is a heritage British brand. They've been around since 1880 and they are still in family ownership. So I think they're in like fifth or sixth family ownership today. There's a Mr. Loke running the company and they are kind of a mass market, uh, mass produced shoe brand, but they do several different tiers of quality in their shoe collection. Now at the top end, and what we're talking about today, is the Loke 1880 range. 1880, remember, it's named after the year that the company was founded and started business. All of the other tiers of Loke shoes, and they've all got different names and various sort of identifiers, but they are not in the same quality category as 1880. So these Loke Birkdale 1880s are at the top end. Uh, ish you know they do export export quality and various other uh, legacy quality and things like that but by and large look offer a pretty good entry point into the quality footwear level for men who are interested in upping their game now if you buy an 1880 product you will find that they are manufactured here in the United Kingdom of the very highest quality products. In fact, they're made in the Loke factory in Kettering up in Northamptonshire, which is kind of the epicenter for men's footwear. Now, they, they are Goodyear welted, which means the sole has been stitched to the upper by way of a mechanical connection. It's stitched up, right? They are not stuck on with cement. They are physically stitched. And this has a number of important quality points for us. Firstly, it's on there, all right? They're not gonna fall off. They're not gonna part. The only way that the sole is gonna leave the upper is if the Goodyear welting is placed under such enormous stress that it fails in some way. I've never seen it happen to a pair of shoes of mine. So that Goodyear welting means it's properly attached. The other really important function of Goodyear welting really means that the shoe can be repaired. You can send the shoe back to the factory and they will remove the worn out sole, be it a, a day night style sole or a leather sole, and they can stitch another one on there. And they can do that something like four or five times. So your shoe can really truly last you for about 25 years if you look after it well, if you get good your welting. And that is what you get with uh, an 1880 standard shoe. Now they are fairly competitively priced. I mean, the Goodyear, uh, uh, sorry, the Goodyear welted 1880 collection is, you know, anything from 250 upwards pounds. So they are vaguely comparable, if you're in the States watching this, to Alan Edmonds. It's a very similar uh, market share, market price point that Loke is going for. And, you know, I recommend them. If you, I mean, I wouldn't recommend anything other than the 1880 range, but if you're gonna get a good pair of shoes and you wanna start off on your journey, Loke 1880 are an approachable price. I mean, they're not in the same league as say Trickers or Barkers or, you know, Churches and Crockett and Jones, who all share 
Northamptonshire as their county of manufacture, but Loke is a good stepping off point into the quality world. Now I purchased these Loke Birkdale 1880 shoes in October, let me check, of 2020. So they've just passed uh, their third anniversary with me. And what else can I tell you? I bought them from eBay and I actually paid £110 for them. Now they were brand new. Uh, when they arrived at my home through the post, they came in the retail box, in the retail bags that the shoes always come in, and they were unworn. There was absolutely no sign of them being worn. Now, although you never know when you buy from eBay, I'm going to guess that these are factory seconds and somebody had access to buying these shoes from that, uh, from that route. The reason I think that is because this is not the first pair of shoes, Loke shoes, that I bought from the same vendor. And I've checked and they're no longer selling them, but I bought several pairs of shoes from that vendor and they were all about half price or less than half price. So when I paid 110 pounds for these shoes, their retail price was at that time 285 pounds. And interestingly, look Burke Tales, they are still in the look catalog today and they still retail for 285 pounds. So actually, Loke have kept them pegged at a competitive price and they're obviously very popular because they're still in the low catalog. So good to know. What can I tell you about the actual model of shoe that we've got here? The Birkdale is a Derby laced shoe. That means the lacing system is made up of two flaps which come together with the laces through them. If it was an Oxford style shoe, the flaps would be integral. They wouldn't be external to the leather of the upper, they'd be part of the upper. So slightly different in its mechanism of lacing. But that is a Derby style shoe. Typically, Derby shoes tend to be less formal and they tend to be seen in shoes like these. So what we're looking at here is a full wingtip brogue. So there's lots of broguing on the shoe, which is what I really like. I'm attracted to broguing because of the interest that it provides to this shoe or any shoe that you see a lot of broguing on. You will find in this, with a wingtip, what you get is this sort of upward V shape, an inverted V at the medallion and the vamp of the shoe. And the reason it's called a wingtip is because that sort of upward swoosh is what they say is in the shape of a bird's wing. So that's the wingtip there. So you get uh, lots of broguing on the medallion, so the toe cap. You get that full wingtip going all the way around the back, around the vamp, around the hindquarters. And then you get additional um, broguing around the lacing system at the top of the shoe as well. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot to see. It's visually attractive and there is quite a bit of texture provided by the broguing. So that's one of the reasons why I love brogues, particularly when you see it in a nice brown colour as well. It just seems to add a lot of interest to it. Now the Birkdale, as I've said, is a full Goodyear welted shoe, which means that sole is stitched to the upper. It ain't coming off. It's on there for a lifetime, so it's a really good quality one. And you'll notice that the shape of the shoe is quite, uh, quite attractive at the front. That's what Loke referred to as their bullet last. Shape of a bullet, I guess, where they've come from with that. And that is deemed to be very attractive, very comfortable. And I can testify to that for both of those things. I do think they're very um, comfortable over long periods of time. Now, the Birkdale comes with a rubber sole. Now what we have here is a Loke version of the more famous Daynight rubber sole. Now Daynight is a British rubber company which specialise in making uh, soles, rubber style soles, for shoes of all kinds. And over the years, you know, they've lost kind of their absolute dominance and many of the shoe brands now create their own version. And what we have here is a Loke version of the day-night sole. So you've got these little dimples in the rubber and on the heel which provide traction and grip when you're walking around on the pavement. And the rubber is perfect for a winter season here in the UK. When I buy um, shoes or boots in this country, I always try to go for day-night if I can, unless I want a really slick uh, total dress shoe and I'll go for leather. But day-night for me offers a really good majestic middle point because it's still quite low profile. So it's still entirely appropriate for a dress shoe, 
but it's got that dual purpose of having really good grip and traction when you need it. So really handsome choice to have on a pair of shoes. Now what we have here is a calf leather shoe. So it's a lovely, good quality leather, which I can tell you takes polish beautifully. It just does, you know, the pores of this high quality leather just suck it all up and it really gives you a lovely shine. It ends up giving you uh, exactly what you want. And for me, one of the main reasons why I purchased this shoe was the enchanting uh, conquer color, as they call it, which in essence is a slightly rusty red brown color, which I find is visually appealing and very wearable because I've worn it with grey flannel slacks, with navy coloured trousers, chinos of all kinds from khaki to, to brown to, to navy. It's really, really flexible colour and it has patinaed rather nicely as the years have gone by. So really, I love that little hint of red in there. Now, the Birkdale is from what Loke refer to as their county collection. And the idea of the county collection is they're providing what I would describe quite a robust shoe with the intention of being something which is capable of dealing with the rigours of maybe going for a walk in the countryside, as well as being perfectly capable of being worn as a city shoe with, you know, your dress clothes as well. And it works really well. It withstands all of the elements and gives you what you need in those circumstances. So what can I say? It's been a really good versatile all-rounder which has performed very well for me. So when I first bought the shoe, how did I treat them? Well, three years ago now, I made a video of fact about it. And the first thing I did was apply uh, Safia Renovator because I didn't know how long these shoes had been on the shelf or wh whatever their sort of authenticity was. I didn't know where they'd been living all this time. So first of all, I wanted to make sure the leather was properly conditioned. So I gave it one good solid coat of Renovator or uh, Safia Renovator, as they like to say in French. And that is just a conditioning cream which adds all the oils and waxes which the leather needs to flourish and look its best. Then I applied some Safia Pomadier shoe cream in the colour which I felt was the most appropriate, which kind of, again, is just nourishing the shoe and protecting the leather. And then finally, I applied a layer of Safia Medal Dior wax polish, which is their higher quality, you know, wax polish. But the other thing I did was I applied a slightly darker colour of wax polish to the toe cap. So it gave an ever such slight burnishing appearance to the shoe, which really, for me, just added a little bit of interest and it made the shoe look as if it had been worn a few times. I hate wearing shoes which look brand new. You know, you look like you're on your first day back at school. I like to have a shoe which has got a bit of life under its belt. And for me, that little bit of burnishing added the patina that I needed to give a bit of character to the shoe. So how have I worn them? Well, I gotta say, these shoes have been pretty much in continuous use for three years now. Because they've got that day-night sole, they allow me to wear them throughout the four seasons. You know, now in the autumn here in the UK, it's getting damper, it's getting wetter, it's getting colder, and the pavements are gonna be slick with rain, fallen leaves. A leather sole shoe is a bit of a, a trip hazard or a slip hazard. For me, a day-night shoe, this is where it shines. This sort of weather, this time of year, it's perfect. And I've worn these shoes extensively. Uh, you know, I've tramped the streets of cities and walked the paths in uh, the, the rural village in which I live. And the good old Birkdale um, Derby Brogue has just come up trumps. It's a really good, solid all-rounder. And again, it can be worn with any range of clothing. You know, if I'm wearing a pair of corduroy trousers and a barber jacket and going out for a walk to the village post office to buy the paper, I can throw these on. Alternatively, the other day, I was in the city of London attending a meet and greet for this channel, actually. I spent two days in London on my own. Family stayed at home because I was going up for a sort of YouTube uh, couple of days. And I walked, I think, in excess of 20 miles over those two days, tramping the city, seeing all the sights up and down, you know, German Street and Savile Row and the Burlington Arcade. And because I was traveling light, I only wanted to take one pair of shoes, all right? I didn't want to take, you know, a pair of uh, comfy walking shoes and then a pair of smart shoes because I know I was going to dress up smartly to meet the guys in the meet and greet. So I thought, 
cannily and I took this pair of shoes because I knew I can walk miles in them. You just wipe them over with a rag and they're eminently suitable. As I did, I wore them with a blazer and grey flannel slacks. They just looked the part and in the daytime, pair of chinos, walking the streets and they were great. Uh, no problems with discomfort to the foot after 20 miles um, and I have to say even after a couple of years of treating them like that um, the day nitro is showing hardly any signs of wear so it is really holding up well and my sort of indication is I'm going to get at least unless I do something weird with them seven years on this initial pair of soles going to have them resold maybe another seven and then another time after that they might actually see me out these shoes if I look after them well. What the other thing I would say to, about these shoes is I've had many compliments on them and I think that's down to the colour. So people will often note the shoe because I've got a little bit of a shine. I don't go for a full mirror shine on a brogue normally but they do have a good healthy luster on these and I have had a few people compliment these shoes when I've been wearing them. I think it's down to the colour which is a little bit more showy but the shine helps as well. So they definitely attract attention when you're talking to people and of course they look you up and down and the eyes will generally linger on the footwear and if you've got a nice pair of shoes on, a nice colour, radiating character and charisma, it's going to make the difference. People are going to notice. So what's my final recommendation for the Birkdale? Well, I think you can tell. Three years of continuous wear totally wearable across my range of clothing at a very approachable price point. They're not showing any depreciation as regards to their appearance. They're still looking great, still wearing great. You know, I've worn them hundreds of miles and they were totally comfortable. They're getting better looking as the patina builds, as I put more polish and more product on them, they're just starting to look better and better. So I envisage having these in the collection for quite some time, I have to say. No issues there at all. Uh, and particularly at the price I paid, I'm very happy. As I say, I would never uh, pay full price for a pair of shoes. You've always got to strike that bargain. And you know, in this case, delighted. 110 pounds, I mean, what can you buy for that these days? Not a great deal on the shoe market. But these, I'm anticipating 20 years of wear. So well worth the effort. Uh, and if you can track a pair down, totally worth bringing into your collection. I've also got a pair of these in black and they have worn just as well, just as capable, fantastic. And I bought them the same route, but I actually got the black ones for only 90 pounds on eBay and in the same, from the same vendor. So, you know, I got them even at a better price. Now I believe the Birkdale is also available in suede and possibly in sort of a pebble grain leather, which is even better if you like the county aesthetic, you know, you like the sort of country style life. So lots of options there. And I just rec just a reminder, I'm in no way associated with Loke. I'm just giving you the update on how they've performed over these last three years. So if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee, you can become a patron and benefit from the additional video content I make for my patrons, or simply just drop me a comment or drop me an email, just as OP Taylor did, and I would be delighted to get back to you. So until the next time, put your best foot forward, especially if that best foot is clad in a pair of low boot tails, and I will see you again very soon.